I hope everybody can hear me, right? Yep. Okay. Per yeah. Perfect. So, yes. so everyone, uh, today's topic is uh, integration patterns and best practices. And just to explain, uh, I am going to give you two demo without writing any code. So even if you're an admin, even if you're a Salesforce architect, solution architect or developer, you should be easily able to follow it. But before that, it is very important to decide what to use when and what are the other options of a Salesforce. So we are going to start with that. Uh, but before that, I would really like to thank uh, Amit Chaudhary to organize this event. Uh, just to all of you guys, uh, let you know that behind the scene, a lot of work being done. Amit has to follow up with all the speakers, make sure the dates are not overlapping, make sure the topics are perfect. So thank you so much, Amit, for having me on Apex Hours again. Thank you, Jitendra, sir. And thank you for taking the session and giving your time over the weekend. So my name is Amit Chaudhary and I'm the I'm a Salesforce MVP and the founder of the FXR. And you can keep following on Amit underscore SFDC or the FXR. So we have an announcement for our upcoming sessions. So here is the list of upcoming sessions. So we, we are going to start one development program from the FAB 10. In that we are going to execute 13 development sessions. In that we will start from the Apex and we'll talk about Visual Four Space, Aura, and Lightning Web Component Basics. So you will be able to understand from the where journey started. And top of it, we have some advanced level, level topic as well, microservice in Salesforce, and how to get the Salesforce CLA plugins. In that, Bob Bazard is going to join us. He's a CTA, so I'm really excited for that. And if you want to RSVP for those sessions, uh, you can find the RSVP detail from the fsr.com slash session in 2020 and we are glad to announce that uh, we are going to uh, start virtual dreaming so we are we are apex r is like glad to be a partner official partner of the virtual dreaming and we are going to run one contest so let me hand over jitendra to explain about that event yep so uh Team, as you can see, right, uh, it's 100 plus uh, participants, and you are able to join from anywhere you are. And considering the success of Apex Server, Path to Code, and Automation Champion, we have started an initiative for, for Dreaming, which is a virtual, and you can join it from anywhere, uh, any location, at comfort of your home. So, Virtual Dreaming uh, is in May, and from this week onwards, uh, Automation Champion and Apex Server is going to run some uh, champions, some contacts contest and as a prize it would be sometime uh, voucher sometimes certification voucher sometime it would be uh, amazon gift voucher so this time the contest starts from feb 1 to feb 15 and the criteria for that is for 10 days that 10 days does not need to be uh, consecutive days a participant has to post minimum three tweet what they think about virtual dreaming what are their expectations from virtual dreaming uh, and they have to use a hashtag virtual dreaming in virtual dream in 20 so that uh, organizers uh, and our committee everybody will know that okay what is the expectation and what we need to make that event uh, great now uh, on after february 15 we are going to randomly select two consistent uh, contestants and automation champion is going to provide the gift voucher and thank you so much automation champion uh, uh, for this initiative and again uh, the decision of automation champion would be final but uh, those also would be selected randomly so i really appreciate uh, all of your help here if you can just spread the word everywhere share news with us share what you are thinking what would be the great some great ideas if you can share us on twitter uh, we would really appreciate and one point so, i want uh, to add here did i did we say virtual dreaming is free Oh yeah, yes, I forgot. So yeah, free. virtual. So anyone can like... join from anywhere. So that's a good thing about this. So we want your help to spread the world across the world so that people will get to know about this event. So hand over to you, Jitendra. Thanks. Perfect. So everyone, uh, I am a frequent on Apex Server. You might know me already. I am a Jitendra Jha, platform architect and a Salesforce MVP in IBM. I, I am an author of Apex Design Pattern. I am an author of Udemy course, which we recently la uh, launched, uh, Mastering Salesforce DX and VS Code. So I will go back. Uh, I will quickly start with agenda. What we are going to cover today, we have just one hour, and I have so many things to cover. Even three hours would not be enough. So I will try to squeeze 
as much as information I can provide with a demo. Now demo, I will try to give two demo, which will involve Salesforce and MuleSoft without writing any code anywhere, okay? All drag and drop and everything. So if you are not speaking, please go on mute. <clears throat> okay. So uh, first of all, right, uh, the question comes, why do we need an integration? Why there is a need? Now, uh, if you think about any business, you think about uh, shops like Amazon or a super supermarket like Walmart, it's not just buying and selling product. It's like maintaining the inventory, maintaining the order, making uh, maintaining payment gateway, uh, maintaining tax information, employee management, there are so many things that are involved. And there is no way right now that any software can fulfill end to end. And that's the reason Salesforce cannot be the source of everything. It can be CRM or it can be any custom application. However, you might have system like ACP, uh, which owns order management or inventory. You might have some external system which sends an email. You might have an external system for payment gateway, handling payment. You might have a system which manages your uh, workforce employees. So the question is, the possibilities are endless. And Salesforce, you might work on the project where Salesforce needs to exchange data with these systems. And that is the reason we have to be very careful deciding what is the right design pattern that we have to follow and how the system can be scalable. But before running on a design pattern or Apex, sorry, integration uh, pattern, first I would like to talk about security between two systems. And I will try to be as simple as possible. So let's say you, it's your computer and that's some cloud server, maybe any web server, anything, and you want to interact, your customer or client wants to interact with your web server. Now in the real hypothetical way, hypothetical world, right? Everything is fine. Nobody is misusing, misusing system, right? But there's no need to say that direct interaction between two systems can be very dangerous and catastrophic. You don't want everyone to try to connect to your system or your server. Every request uses energy. And it could corrupt your data, it could expose confidential activity that could be used either against you, either against your company or someone dear and near to you. So to avoid any hacking possibilities, we need to consider some options. So first option you might already know, firewall. Firewall controls and protects malicious traffic. Firewall can be hardware or it can be software based and firewall normally uh, you can have on your system as well, and of course, server needs to have a firewall. Now, proxy, or sometimes this is also known as a forward proxy. Proxy normally configured in your browser or system. Uh, for example, if you have an application like VS Code, you have Data Loader, you have AdLibs, to hide your actual identity. Every outgoing request transmits through your proxy server, making it more secure. Now, in the same way, if your system has a proxy for outgoing traffic, there is a reverse proxy for your web server for it is used uh, for all the incoming. Now, uh, reverse proxy is used by web server. It sits before it. It can serve many purpose. For example, authentication, or it can perform some security related stuff. Now, best example of reverse proxy is MuleSoft. Now, in MuleSoft, we have API proxy which is used to apply throttling capability. It is used to avoid denial of service attack or you can apply some SLA on the basis of license of application. So there are so many use of reverse proxy. So that's all about the basic security. Now the question is, we have two system, and let's assume that we have our security in place. What are some of the factors that affects our choice to choose uh, integration pattern? So first choice is, do we need to maintain the same transaction? Does Salesforce need to perform anything immediately when we get a response? So for example, you create an order inside Salesforce, you send a message to the external system, external system creates the order in order management and returns order ID and you really need that order ID in that sequence. Or you simply create an order, information goes to the external system and external system can take their time, maybe a night, maybe four hour, five hour, really don't, you don't need response at the moment. So that is a very immediate 
are very important decision you need to make. Another is you need to understand, does your integration has to be synchronous or asynchronous? Is it a business critical and response needs to be processed in real time or near real time? And then you also have to think about the message size. Now everything is happening over HTTP and HTTP has a limitation. So is really message size going to be any problem? Now you also need to understand, does the external system needs a guaranteed delivery? What if the external system is down? What will happen to that message? That decision you have to consider, that factor you have to consider. Can external system follow contract first strategy? If Salesforce defines some rule, can external system or a remote system is open to follow that? And does external system or your partner system prefer declarative versus code? So, and there are a few more, but in my opinion, these are the top factors that might affect uh, your decision that what integration pattern needs to be followed. So, first integration pattern, I'm going to talk about request and reply. Sometimes it's known as request and response. <clears throat> now, option A in this type of pattern is you can use external services. If you don't know, external services is out of the way integrating Salesforce with external system using flows. So if you are an admin, you are champion in the flow, you use external services and you can integrate the, the few caveats though is the external system should be able to provide you open API or intelligence schema. And at the moment, external services only support primitive data types. Another option you can have always is lightning web component or Aura component or visual force page that calls external system. Now Salesforce, uh, have a capability that okay you import visual in your salesforce or you generate a proxy classes from it if you want to integrate via soap or salesforce also supports the rest api rest api basically is http based where you can use rest methods like get post put or delete and user can initiate those kind of integration from a custom ui another option is trigger of course so something happened in salesforce and, and again, all these are requests and reply. That means you want reply immediately whenever you are hitting the external system. Either you hit external system real time or near real time. Now, how can we make a call up to external system, right? For example, if the data changed, some record got created. The problem is trigger does not support synchronous. If you know, if you are an Apex developer, you know that you have to go via future route or you have to go by queueable route to make a call out from trigger. So that is a one caveat in that option. Another is you can write a batch apex. Batch apex has a start method, execute method, and finish method. Now every execute method gets its own transaction, its own limit, and you can use those just to call an external system. But again, we have in a single transaction, how many API calls you make, or what is the maximum time duration? That is a governor limit you have to be conscious. So now in the request and reply at high level, we have around four patterns. Now the question is, which one is the best? What is the best practice here? Out of these four, what should I choose? So, I will give external services five out of five. If there is any chance you can integrate Salesforce using Flow and external services without writing any code, go ahead, use that. But if you need to have a UI, initiate integration from Salesforce to external system from the UI, then using LWC or Visual Force is also one of the best practices that you can follow. However, I would say trigger a suboptimal solution. If there is any requirement in your project where you need to initiate integration from trigger, try to avoid it. See if there could be some other option. And same goes for batch apex as well. So batch apex and trigger in the request and reply should be your last priority if it can be done either by LWC visual force or external services. Any question team you have, keep posting on chat and I will try to answer at the end of this session. So request and reply is one pattern and we see what are the options in that pattern and we know what is the best practice here. Let's talk about fire and forget. That's another integration pattern. As name suggests, Salesforce just initiates the request and Salesforce do not even wait for it to be completed. So. Let's say uh, there are criteria what to choose when we have multiple options here. So first option, let's say 
you prefer point and click again everybody should prefer point and click if there is an option do not directly jump on writing a code that's always the best practice now you want to initiate your integration on dml and you want same message to be sent to multiple system so something happened in salesforce that same message needs to go in inventory system order management system sap system finance system let's say that's the that's the right now not happening maybe in the future the possibility is there and you want scalable uh, integration pattern where you are following enterprise integration design pattern now the question is what is the right solution if these criteria fit in your project or your situation and the answer is platform event so platform events are event messages or you can say notification that your app send and receive to take further action platform events is a process driven platform event and it best simplifies the process of communicating changes and responding them without writing any complex logic one or more subscriber can listen to the same event and they can carry out any action external app can listen to event messages by subscribing to a channel through a common deep protocol platform apps such as visual force or lightning component they can also subscribe using common deep and and this is the best practice to follow if there is any way to follow a platform event go ahead proceed it and again we are talking about process driven platform and that means this platform event is generated using process builder point and click not writing any code however there is situation that you want almost same same scenario the only change now is there is some problem there is some uh, consideration that you are not able to use a process builder but you really need a code like trigger rapid to generate a platform event even in that case i would suggest go ahead use platform event and it would be said customization driven platform event the only difference between previous map pattern and this pattern is in this pattern platform event is generated using code in previous pattern platform event was generated using point and click and i will give four star to this design pattern also the big integration pattern now let's say uh, there is again like i said one size never fits all there are dynamics here now let's say you have a situation where you still want to prefer no code you want guaranteed delivery this is the difference between the previous you want to make sure that if the external system is down we should be able to retry that multiple time again you want this integration to start on dml you want this integration to be scalable and you want this integration to be contract first what that mean is salesforce will decide that these are the six seven field i'm going to send to you this is the format of wisdom you want to implement and just i will connect to you now the question is what is the right integration pattern here and the answer is outbound messages before platform event outbound message was the best practice but now if you have a tie between outbound message and platform event i would suggest go ahead with the platform event one advantage in outbound message is you can pass session id as a part of request body what that mean is remote system do not need to log into the salesforce they can grab that session id and they can connect to the salesforce and they can do some operation for an example outbound message has a limitation that it can send data from only one object what if you need the data from multiple objects simple you send out one message external system will come back to the salesforce with same session id and it will grab more information from salesforce and i am going to give this integration pattern as a four star five star still goes to the platform event so now let's say you have custom user interface or you have a trigger now you want to integrate from custom user interface and trigger now this solution is typically used in a user interface scenario and the problem is this requires a customization in addition the solution most handle guaranteed delivery of the message now this solution can also be applied from trigger it can invoke soap or it can be http based and it would be asynchronous because we are talking about fire and forget 
Now, the question is, what is the right here? So, if the situation is like this, that you have a custom-based interface, you need to use an Apex, then of course you can use Apex-based callout. You can either use SOAP API or you can use a REST API. <coughs> Sorry. Now, is this best practice? Should we do this? Should we integrate Salesforce with external system, but writing, see, whenever we are talking about writing Apex code, indirectly we are topic, talking about um, maintenance. Think about it, your experience in the Salesforce ecosystem. Is there any code you have written today which is running from the last many years if the users are keep using it? Nothing is constant, right? Everything is changing. So anything you're writing, you need to make sure you're keep updating that code or that functionality every three months, six months, or you have to revisit it every year. That is the reason I'm going to give this integration pattern as 2.5. This is really a sub-optimal solution. If this is the last resort, then only you should consider these type of integration. Now, another integration pattern uh, or the need is, let's say, uh, how do you import data inside Salesforce or how do you export data outside of Salesforce? Now, taking into consideration these imports and exports, these can, these can interfere with end user operation during business hours, or it involves large amounts of the data. So the question is, how do we integrate Salesforce with integration system which involves a large data volume? And what are some of the options we have? So scenarios like this, we are talking about batch integration. So let's see what are the options and what are the best practices that we should follow in a batch integration between Salesforce and external system. The highest priority I would give is change data capture. If you have a capability, if you have an option, and if you want to integrate Salesforce data with external system and CDC is a choice, go ahead with this. Salesforce publishes any change event on a record and that change event represents a record or the changes of the object. That's the option one you should go ahead with. I will give this integration five out of five if you are using CDC for your integration purpose. And we are talking about bulk data volume here. Another option I will give, my second priority is whenever you are talking about huge data volume, the data migration or data replication or integration is never apple to apple or orange to orange. You need to extract information. You have to transform that data in the target system. So for an example, let's say you want to import data inside Salesforce from Microsoft Dynamics, or let's say Siebel CRM. You cannot simply download those data and just use the data loader or some tool to import data inside Salesforce. You have to clean the data, you have to dupe data, uh, you have to nourish those data, and in order to do all those operations, there are many built in tools in the market. Those are excellent in that kind of work. And that is my second choice. And I will say ETL tool gets four star out of the five star when we are talking about large digital volume integration or the batch integrations. Now, another, and again, this is not my choice at all. If you don't have any option, and when Salesforce or external system, of course they can call each other. Salesforce can call external system using Apex like we discussed using SOAP API or HTTP API or external system can connect to the Salesforce using multiple ways. So any change happening in any system, you initiate a custom integration or custom messages. The problem is it would cause a huge ongoing traffic. And in practice, you should avoid these kind of spaghetti integration it would be not possible to manage in the long term. And that is the reason this, I will consider this kind of the integration as suboptimal integration. And you should avoid these type of integration between Salesforce and external system. Now, another pattern. So how many patterns do we talk? We talk request and reply. We talk fire and forget. We talk batch integration. Another type of the integration is remote calling. What that means is uh, how does a remote system connect and authenticate with Salesforce to notify Salesforce about external events, something happened externally. It can create record inside Salesforce, it can delete record inside Salesforce, it can update record inside Salesforce. 
what are the options we have in these scenarios? So of course, Salesforce supports out of the box, SOAP and the REST API. You really don't need to write anything. You get a login.salesforce.com, you go on the documentation, all the detail about what external system can use is available in the developer yeah. forum. So first, security. Any API exposed by Salesforce, you must need a security. You must log into the Salesforce. You must need to have a social ID. There is no way you can hit Salesforce API without a valid user. So security is the highest priority in the Salesforce ecosystem. That's the advantage of using SOAP API and REST API. Now, there are options for the bulk data load as well. There are REST-based API inside Salesforce. Like in previous slide, we saw that in the batch integration, ETL tool can connect. Question is, how ETL tool can connect? So the ETL tool can use bulk data API. And normally the best practice, if you need to do more than 5,000 record, or sorry, 50,000 record, use REST-based bulk API. That's the suggestion. It's typo in my slide, it should be 50,000. Now, another advantage is you can use platform event. So we saw previously that you can use a platform event to send data outside Salesforce. If you want event-driven architecture, you can use the same platform event to create event inside Salesforce, in which case Salesforce would be subscriber, not the publisher. Now, like I said, SOAP API and the REST API is out of the box solution. And if we talk about WSDL or SOAP API, we have two type of APIs, partner WSDL or enterprise WSDL. Now enterprise WSDL is a strong type API. So if you are writing any code using enterprise WSDL, that means that code will only work for that all. However, if you want to write generic, go ahead with the partner WSDL. And always, if as a best practice, if you have option to use a partner WSDL, go ahead and use a partner WSDL. The only thing is enterprise WSDL makes integration a lot easier because you no need to uh, deal with polymorphism or dynamic. In partner WSDL, you need to, uh, because that's the comp same WSDL is going to be used by every partner. So little bit more learning curve in the partner WSDL. And again, like I said, the standard REST API as well that you can use to get the metadata information, to create a record, perform any operation on the record. And when we talk about SOAP API and the REST API, accessibility. You can use these API to publish, like I said, publish events, query data, perform create operation, update operation, or delete operation. If you, are for, if you want to integrate with Salesforce and you're using standard SOAP or REST API, standard bulk API, that should be your highest priority. And if you ask me how, ma how much points uh, I'm gonna give, and what is the best practice for these kind of integration? I will say SOAP and the rest of the API gets five out of five. So you should always prefer these integration if you're talking about remote call in. Now, <clears throat> so there is an option that you can create a custom API inside Salesforce. Again, Apex is pretty powerful language. Uh, you can create SOAP API inside Salesforce. Uh, you can create HTTP based API inside Salesforce. And again, Apex can, like I said, Apex can be used to expose a API as a SOAP or REST resource. The benefit of Apex-based API must be weighted against additional code that needs to be maintained. Like I said, whenever the term Apex comes, this is very powerful language, but you should save it for the last. You should use Apex only when there is no other out-of-the-box solution available because Writing Apex always comes with a maintenance issue. And the question is, what should we use it? Of course, it's a Apex-based API. And if you ask me, is it a best practice? I will say it is a suboptimal solution. Writing your own API, if you already have a REST API, if you already have a SOAP API, if you already have a bulk API, do not do that, okay? Now, another type of integration pattern, and this is a uh, last integration pattern I'm gonna cover and then we will directly jump on demo. And that is a data virtualization. As you can imagine, uh, as the name suggests, there are two systems. In Salesforce, how do you view, search, and modify a data that's stored outside the Salesforce? 
and without moving the data from external system to Salesforce, Salesforce to the external system, how can you do that? What are the options we have here? Let's talk about that. What you can do is, uh, you can again use Salesforce Connect, uh, which can pull data from the legacy system, such as SAP, Microsoft, and Oracle. And all this happens using point and click. And the options we have is OData 2 or OData 4 protocol. If you are using Salesforce Connect, you can perform create operation, or update operation, or delete operation in external system. Just like any standard or custom object, external object in a Salesforce Connect supports list view, page layout, custom tasks. Again, there are some uh, governor limits around here. There are some consideration. If you ever think to use a Salesforce Connect, I would suggest go ahead, read the documentation, and see if this is the right fit for you. Okay. Another option for the data virtualization is you can use a request and reply because all you want is to see the external data which is in outside system in Salesforce. And you can use a combination of LWC, VDF, or Flow, or Apex callout. And again, we have seen that like, there are REST API, there are SOAP API, use any of those. If you ask me that out of these two solutions, which solution is the best solution or the right solution, what is the best practice? If you need to use the data virtualization, I will give Salesforce Connect five out of five and request and reply any customization again is suboptimal. I will give it 2.5 only. So if you have both options, you should always go with Salesforce Connect instead of custom request and reply. So let's see a uh, summary that what we covered. Uh, it's a lot of information I know. Uh, and if you have any issue, feel free to uh, connect me on LinkedIn. Feel free to drop me a message on my blog. Uh, I would be happy to help you and happy to answer any question. There are so many things I have left because I have, like I said, I have only one limited hour. There are canvas why we use a canvas, when we can use canvas, those kind of the questions if you have, we can surely discuss that. So, if we talk about integration pattern summary, first we talk about request and response, uh, where Salesforce needs to wait for the response to complete any process. Another we talk about fire and forget. Response is not needed immediately. Another we talk about is batch integration, where you need to replicate or synchronize data between systems. Then we talked about remote calling, where the external system needs to connect to the Salesforce to perform some operation. And last, we talked about virtualization, data virtualization, where we want to see the live data, external data inside Salesforce without bringing data. Because bringing the data inside Salesforce, you have to talk about uh, uh, accountability. If something goes wrong, which system is uh, responsible for that? You need to make sure both systems data are in sync. Uh, talk about the data volume, performance. So again, data virtualization is also one of the best design pattern if you can go ahead with this uh, with integration pattern. So sorry, whenever I'm using a design pattern, I really mean I'm talking about integration pattern in this case, integration design pattern. So let's talk about demo. No, like I said, I have so many options here. I can I can go ahead and write any demo. I can show you the demo of custom Apex. There are so many blogs available. You can go ahead, you can read. Uh, I have added some reference on the different various, various integration. What I'm going to give you demo is the best practice. And if you see in our slide, multiple times I have said that I am going to use a platform event. So let's see how platform event can be used. So. I'm going to log into my Salesforce org. Let me see if I have anything here. Okay. <clears throat> I'll go login.salesforce.com. So what I have done is I have already created a platform event for this session. So if I go in setup and uh, try to search for platform event in Salesforce. So I have created a lead info platform. I have created Cloud News. So let's go ahead and see the Cloud News platform that I created, if you see last slide. And what I have done is, just like any custom object, I have created three fields. I have created location field, news content field, and 
content field. And again, if you try to see what are the options available when you try to create a new field in platform event, there are limited options. You don't see lookup relationship, you don't see master detail relationship, you don't see formula fields here. So these are the uh, some options. And uh, one thing, if you have observed, any platform event ends with underscore underscore a. Now, platform event is like enterprise messaging queue built on top of Salesforce. So like any messaging queue, you can have a publisher who creates an event. You have a subscriber who subscribes to that event. And you can create these events using Process Builder, Flow, or Apex. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create an integration in MuleSoft. Whenever the platform event is created inside Salesforce, I need to read that information inside MuleSoft. So if you don't have a MuleSoft, no worry. All you can do is you can go on any point dot mulesoft.com and you can always create 30 day trial. So right now I am on my trial version. Uh, I keep creating my trial every 30 days, Jitendra 1, Jitendra 2, Jitendra 3. It's up to you what naming convention you need to follow here. So I have created this. I'm going to create an application for the MuleSoft. If you are familiar about MuleSoft, great. If not, there is an Apex our video on the basics of the MuleSoft. I will suggest go ahead and uh, uh, go through that MuleSoft uh, video. And again, that was not really recorded for Apex server. That was recorded for uh, group. And that is the reason you might see a lot of forth and back discussion between audience and me, but that will work. So this is the MuleSoft I already have, but I'm going to do in this MuleSoft. And again, it's, if you see it's the Eclipse and you can download this MuleSoft or it's also known as AnyPoint Studio from their website. I will say continue. So this is my Eclipse Studio. I just downloaded it. All you need is a Java and Eclipse. Uh, which is AnyPoint Studio. I'm going to create a new MuleSoft project. All you have to do is right click, new Mule project. And I'm going to say Apex Hours, let's say Feb. I'm saying I'm going to use Mule version 4 because there's a Mule version 3 as well. And we always need to be with greatest and latest technology. And let's so this is how my MuleSoft project got created. Now everything I am doing is on local. I am going to give you a demo how I can deploy this application on external system as well. So if I double click here, so if I you go on SRC main Mule, this is the placeholder. This is your canvas. Again, like I said, I am not going to write any code, and I'm I will try to follow that promise. So if you see in the MuleSoft. On the right side, you have a palette. There are so many connectors available that you can utilize. It's a very uh, powerful tool. I would suggest go ahead, understand how the new software works. It will really help you many times. It's far better than data loader or any other ETL tool that at least I have used. So what I will do is I will search for subscribe. So if you see, I search for subscribe. There is an out of the box component available from Salesforce, I am saying, okay, I am going to subscribe a channel. Give me one minute. System is not responding. Okay, okay. So I am subscribing. Now I have to create a connector. So I will say, okay, let's go ahead create a connector. Now, if you see in our slide, first slide itself, we talked about proxy. This is a forward proxy. So now every time you know, you you see proxy, you will know why there is a need of proxy. I don't need any proxy. I'm directly going to connect from my system to uh, Salesforce. So I'm going to provide my Salesforce user name and password. And password. Just like any data loader tool or anything, I don't have any security lock token because uh, my system is open and let's try to test connection. Perfect. So that means my username password is right and MuleSoft is able to connect to my org where I have defined that platform event. And let's say, okay. Now if you see, it still says this is the mandatory, which is a streaming channel. So if you want to listen on any platform event, you have to use event and you have to give the 
platform event name. Let's go back and see what is our platform event name here. We have cloud news. So I'm going to say let's use this. And in fact, it is a best practice to give the name which you can understand. And I will say subscribe cloud news. Okay, so everything looks good. Now, I'm not going to do any fancy here. You can do anything you want in your middleware. All I'm going to do is print a log saying that, yes, I really found something. So this is the logger component. If you see on my favorite, I will simply drag and drop my logger component here. It automatically creates the relation. And I'm going to say, do nothing, but just print the payload. Whatever the payload I'm getting, just print that. That's it. Again, I have not written any code. Let's start my server. I can run project. Now this server, new soft server is starting on my local system. Perfect. So server started. If you see deployment status, everything is fine. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, <clears throat> I would publish this platform. And like I said, there are multiple ways we can publish this event. And again, if you go on the trailhead, trailhead does have the module about it. I What I did is I just copied a code from trailhead and I'm going to use that code. So if you see, I have this code from trailhead. You can run this code in developer console. You can run from anywhere. I really love uh, VS Code because if you see VS Code has all my credentials and everything. So I am connected to my uh, org already. What I'm going to do is I would be publishing content from here and let me split my screen so that you would be able to see live what is happening. And so this is side by side, okay? So I'm going to create an event inside Salesforce. Salesforce is publisher and MuleSoft is subscriber. All I have to do, Control Shift P on my VS Code. I will say execute and anonymous effects. Okay, so it's successful. Again, it's the and now if you see, my MuleSoft was able to read exactly the same. So if you see Houston to Dallas, 90 minute first high speed railway in US. If you go here, this is exactly what I got in 90 minute first high speed railway. If I say, wait, let me, I will say, let's say India budget 2020. Control shift P, execute and reverse effect. Again, I'm publishing an event from my VS code. It's a messaging bus. If you see, Im almost immediately, my VS Code got that same event. So that's how the powerful and how easy to use platform event. It's a scalable, it's a reliable, it's enterprise messaging bus, and that is the reason I gave platform event five out of five. Now again, another thing is, if you are not using VS Code, I would strongly recommend go ahead and invest some time this weekend, next week learning how the VS Code works. There are awesome articles, awesome resources available on the internet on how to understand, how to get VS Code. In fact, I just published in, uh, my video on Udemy. If you want, you can go ahead and check that as well. So that's the demo one. Now, if you see, I have given another five star. I have given multiple five star in my integration pattern, but another five star I have given is outbound messages. Question is, can you use outbound message in Salesforce, implement in MuleSoft without writing any code? And that is going to be very exciting. Let's do that. So we used five star, which is a platform event. We are going to use four star integration pattern now, which is going to be using and uh, yeah, going to use overflow rules or outbound message, give me one minute. Yeah. Okay, I'm done with VS Code. I will stop my server. I think I already stopped my server. 
that is okay so what i'm going to do for the platform event sorry for the outbound message i have already created a outbound message again it's very easy to create outbound message you go in salesforce setup go on outbound messages and i have created outbound messages which is going to send lead information forget about this url at the moment i really don't care about that can be anything so for example i give, go here i will say something like you can provide any url so when you are creating a outbound message you can just go ahead say localhost.com or something that's not a problem okay the only problem is if you click uh, send session id and if you try to save it, you will get an error that, okay, send session ID does not support HTTP. You have to go ahead with HTTP as protocol. Again, if you go on my channel, I have explained in my channel how you can create HTTP S endpoint on MuleSoft. And my channel is my first name, last name. Go ahead, search on the YouTube and you would be able to follow. Just within a few minutes, you can create a MuleSoft endpoint. I'm not going to send session ID, very simple. I'm going to send first name, last name. Let's say I'm going to send country, okay? Uh, let's say I'm going to send an email. I'm configuring it. Let's save this. So once you create an outbound message, you get very important file, which is a visual file. Go ahead and click on this file. This is, if you see, don't try to understand exactly uh, how this file looks. If you are architect, technical architect, developer, it's a contract. Basically, now Salesforce is creating a contract for external system A. You have to follow exactly this pattern and I'm going to save this result on my local system. I will say Apex hours result. <coughs> Extension can be anything, not a problem. <coughs> now, if you see, I have already created a workflow rule, outbound on lead, and what this says, whenever uh, the lead is getting created, or every time it is updated, and its last name is not null, invoke this action, and this action is nothing but our outbound message. So we are going to implement this. Now, how, in order to do that, I would suggest you download SOAP UI. So I'm going to take a help of SOAP UI here, and I will tell you why I need a SOAP UI. Just a minute. And the SOAP UI, close this, I will say, I want to create a new request. I'm going to say, Apex hours. The visual we just downloaded, and I'm going to say Apex hour visual. Perfect. So it created this visual. I go on request. So this is how the request is going to look like. I'm really not interested in request at the moment. All I'm interested is how the response is going to work. So I'm going to say right click, add to mock service. Yes. Now what it does is it gives, it tells me that Salesforce is expecting this. If I can give this to the Salesforce, we are all happy. Now let's see how we are going to do that. So. Now in MuleSoft, in single project, you can have a multiple modules. So now I have one module for subscription. Let's create another module. And I'm going to say this time I need a HTTP listener. Now platform event also resides same place in the same project. I'm going to create this. And this is basically a HTTP listener. I'm going to create a listener here. I'm going to say, let's test connection. This way it will make my server as a local host, everything good. And the base base part I will say is outbound, let's say. So this URL would be used in MuleSoft to hit the outbound messages. Test connection again, everything looks good, perfect. And wait, actually I did, something. this is not the right place. I want outbound here and I have to tell on my canvas saying that, okay, this is the outbound. Now what we will do is we will simply print whatever comes from here. So to print anything again, we can use simply logger. We have used logger as well. And I will say 
print XML as it is. And the message, what we need to print here in this case is simple uh, payload. So, Now, Salesforce is expecting a response from this server, this service. The only response Salesforce is expecting is true or false. Now, what we can do is we can use a transform message here. And we have to provide this message. So, what I will do is I will copy this message and I will just save this file somewhere. So, I will say this an acknowledgement can either be true or it can be false. So I already have a sample acknowledgement on my VS project. If you see mock response.xml, I'm going to use this file. Again, I'm not writing any code. I'm just taking help of various tools available to me. I will say in transform message, define metadata. I, so what I'm going to tell Musoft, this is the sample exam example. Read the example and write a code for me. So if you see, Newsoft is going to write code here for you. And let's see how that's gonna work. I really not need to be a master in XML. I can just go ahead here and I will say uh, sample outbound response. Create type. And I'm saying this is XML and I'm going to provide an example file. Example file is X our trailhead challenges. Yes. So I provided it is saying me, okay, what is the root element? I'm saying the root element is envelope. So this is the structure because if you see here, the first element was envelope. So I have to tell here, okay, envelope was the first. That's it. Now, if I want to generate something here, or oh, I, I can, okay, what I can do is expand here and keep watching on the right side what is happening. Temporarily, I will just drag and drop something. I really don't need that. And I will simply say here, true. Now, if you see the preview, here, if you click on the preview, it will show that what Newsoft is going to return. So Newsoft is going to return. The only problem now I see is Newsoft is going to return NS0, NS01 really doesn't matter, but I really don't want NS0. I need exactly the SOAP ENV. So I will go in my mule and I will replace NS0 here by SOAP ENV, SOAP ENV. If you see here, this is exactly the format I want. I go back here. I go, I use out schema and here NS01 is out, out, out. Perfect. So this is exactly what I want. Now the only problem here is we are almost done. This is my local host behind a firewall. It's not a public IP. Salesforce does not know anything about. So I need to put this service on cloud. So I'm going to deploy it on MuleSoft. We know how the deployment works in Salesforce. You have options like MuleSoft. Uh, you have, sorry, you have options like Chainsight. You have options like uh, Ant, yeah. DX. In, mm -hmm. in MuleSoft, then please go on mute if you're not speaking. So in MuleSoft, I'm going to right click, Mule, see how the deployment is going to work. Any point platform, deploy to Cloud Hub. I'm going to provide my username, which is Jitendra5. Now you can guess how many mules of I create every month. So it's fifth month if I create every month, but that's fine because all my source code on my local system. Even if my mules of expires, that's not a problem because I still have a source code. I will go ahead, sign in. <coughs> it is connecting to the cloud mules of. I'm saying go ahead in sandbox. And it is also automatically getting the name of my project and I'm completely fine. Now, one thing here is it is going to deploy both solutions. It is going to deploy my platform event solution and it is also going to deploy this solution. And I will say just deploy application here. 
now behind the scene if you are a java developer what it is doing is it is creating a jar file and it is going to push that jar file on any point cloud so if i go here on any point studio if i go on api manager and i don't have any api at the moment i should be behind the scene it is being deployed sometimes it depends on your internet connection and a lot of other factors hopefully we would be able to deploy it in a time so that I, okay perfect so it is being deployed i can close the window if you see here i go on my sandbox again if you need to know about news of basic go ahead and watch my video that's a really a uh, basic video and you will understand the capability of news of so you see apex server fab is trying to be deployed here if i click here uh, i click on the manage application this it this is the url i can copy this link i have to go back on my outbound message remember we have the local host here i need to edit this i have to tell salesforce where this request has to go this request has to go here and in my muse of if you go on the listener i am listening at the path outbound i have to use this path here perfect save this and i am going to create a sample lead now or i am going to just update a sample lead here but let's say if what is happening here so if i go on log you would be able to see complete detail log so it seems everything is application is started all set we can start sending out one message now so i am here and let's edit jim i am going to say last name is this there now again outbound message is not real time it might hit exactly same moment now in this case you see it really hit the same moment and it is giving me an information so see i said inform gym information gym first name gym last name everything and news of return true that means integration is successful that how powerful and easy to implement an outbound message now you can monitor outbound message if you go in monitoring and outbound message section if there is any fail attempt let's change this example quickly just to show you how the things work and again i am going to do something different here i am going to use another logger message i will say again print payload i will say print json how easy in mule soft to convert xml to json let's see transform message is one of the more highly used component here all we have to do here is i have to change application java to application json and i have to say simply payload and the only difference this time i am going to say false that means i will say integration is fail something happened in a external system maybe some server error or something i will mark it fail i will deploy it again i will go on any point studio i will go deploy to cloud hub i can overwrite my existing application so it is going to if you see this check box it is going to overwrite if you want you can create a new version and i'm going to say deploy just few more minutes and then i can go for go through q and a in the meantime what i'm expecting is every so like i said if you remember my slide i said guaranteed delivery outbound message make sure that delivery is guaranteed if someone is replying false that means it has to retry again it will keep retrying let's see application is being deployed if you see okay it's not yet started because i can see real time here so okay i can close the window let's refresh it if you see musoft is updating this application 
and i can simply go on manage application on any point again this is the cloud i was working on my local you can go on logs and uh, let's wait here you would be able to see all the logs here Okay, everything is here. <clears throat> so, so let's see. Now what I'm expecting here as per this is our application is going to print XML. Our application is going to convert XML to JSON. So it will print JSON here and it is going to return false. That means Salesforce should be retrying it. Again, this is asynchronous. When we are talking about asynchronous, either in platform event or either in outbound, order is not guaranteed. And that is the nature of asynchronous. So you have to be, if you need to manage order, that means you're talking about critical, uh, mission critical application, you need to go synchronous. Or some custom logic in middleware. So everything looks good. Let's go ahead and let's change Jib again. I will just use over two here. Save this, class name was modified. I am here. Now if you see, I am able to see XML, perfect. I am able to see JSON. So see in single line, I was able to convert XML to JSON. And if I go on delivery, if I refresh it, now you can see it is going to retry it. So outbound message was retried one time. Now it is going to keep retrying, keep retrying for 24 hours uh, before it drop out from the queue until this system replies or acknowledges true. So that's the session for today, team. Uh, I hope it was helpful. Let's go on Q and A. So uh, Amit, I was not watching on the Q and A. Do you see a question that I can uh, we can start discussing? Yeah, we have a couple of questions. So you want me to read? Or let me uh, yeah, okay. ask everyone, like if anybody have any question, feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question directly. Yeah, that would be great. Hey, Amit. Uh, I see what... Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Jitendra. This is um, a really a helpful session. Uh, I think I learned a lot on the different patterns. Uh, however, I have a quick quest question on platform events. Um, mm -hmm. well, I have the replay ID in platform events, right? So obviously, I think you can manage the sequence of events, uh, I believe, uh, which is an advantage over outbound messaging. And the other thing is, uh, uh, we, we, were, we have been implementing the platform. Mm -hmm. One issue uh, that we have is we were not able to send empty string. Uh, to the platform events. Uh, so uh, do you think of any workaround for that uh, other than just um, doing the translation uh, based on some keyword, uh, let's say empty string, uh, or uh, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, workarounds that you think of for handling the empty string? So yeah, event. so I have not, yeah, I have not phased. So first of all, thank you so much. Yeah, I replay ID is the thing where you can uh, make sure that guaranteed uh, or order is maintained and uh, that is the reason i gave platform event is a five out of five okay now coming to your question uh empty string i really have not encountered it but what i would try is instead of sending uh empty string maybe i will send some default uh strings like not allowed none or something and or something right, uh, right. If, so there, there is a workaround we have implemented yeah. right but i don't know if in future salesforce is considering to uh, include some kind of fix for that uh, but right now we are going with uh, some keyword where uh, the mule soft or some other translator is doing the, the job of converting that into an empty string and pushing it to the destination yep that's what we're doing perfect perfect but, perfect but, yeah just yeah, one uh, one foot for mm -hmm. sorry go ahead sorry go ahead one foot for, yeah one foot for thought right what i have observed in my project we implemented platform event and we almost hit governor limit in an hour 
because platform event has hourly governor limit as well so you need to make sure that while you are testing you need to do all your due diligence otherwise you have to pay extra to salesforce to improve increase your platform and capacity got it all right so yes. on the outbound message as well outbound messages so yeah outbound messages i am not aware about uh, governor limit uh, if someone on this call please uh, let me know i know that outbound message chunks 100 message in a single call so right now only one message went but outbound message is really capable to chunk 100 messages at the time and send to the external system got it i don't i don't believe there is a i don't believe there is a limit on the uh, outbound message there is a, though 24 hour it will retry every retry it will keep increasing the time interval Okay, got it. Thank you. This is helpful. Yeah. Hey, Jitendra Narish here. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, the end-to-end -end, uh, overall integration uh, uh, over you. So I have a question here. Like uh, here, MuleSoft. We are talking about MuleSoft, but uh, let's say like most of the integrations we do are uh, third-party applications. Let's say there will be ordering solutions or coding solutions which we want to integrate with Salesforce. So in those cases, like. is mulesoft applicable here or can we use platform events or outbound messages there because those homegrown solutions are mostly on dotnet or java based applications so like the usual way we integrate is like a uh, using rest apis like http callouts and uh, uh, do the uh, authentication and then uh, do the callout so uh, that's how uh, i have seen uh, the typical applications to be uh, developed as so what do you think like can dotnet or third uh, or dotnet or uh, java applications uh, can be integrated with salesforce uh, using platform events or uh, outbound messages that's a pretty good question uh, naresh and uh, before coming to that question right mulesoft is pretty good used as a esb okay i have seen couple of project where mulesoft has been used in etl and it is success as well uh, but in but to answer your question uh, right one of the most uh, fascinating or uh, i will say uh, characteristics of the muse of which i like is it has a capability to go mix and match for an example mulesoft can be completely cloud based mulesoft can be completely on premise so for an example in my case mulesoft running on my system which is similar to the on premise mulesoft can also go on hybrid so basically mulesoft can be used in any environment you have government regulation you have security or anything now in terms of integrating mulesoft with java or the dotnet answer is yes it can be integrated there are two options number one if java and the dotnet has a capability to hit the api or of course normally java and dotnet does has as a programming language but as an application i don't know that you need to understand if they can hit yes mulesoft can expose an api you can go ahead integrate it another way which is not a recommended way is whatever the database used by java or the dot and maybe sql server maybe oracle you can connect to those database directly from mulesoft as well that is another way sub optimal way not recommended but yes there are possibilities there but uh, are we not introducing one more level of indirection like if with a uh, http callouts or with a uh, so based integration it's like one to one integration if you are uh, bringing in mulesoft in the picture and uh, uh, we are saying like we'll uh, send the request sales force will send the request to mulesoft mulesoft i mean like usually like these uh, applications the endpoint applications we cannot directly integrate it to the databases because like they have their own business logic that needs to be uh, uh, implemented as well right so like uh, those uh, um, so mulesoft intern i mean intern calling the endpoint on the java application or a dotnet application is it not an overkill very good very good so good discussion happening here so now this what you have said is correct there is overkill but then you have to compare right what are the advantages you are getting by introducing one extra layer and this statement is right for any middleware it's not only about mule same for informatica same for bumi same for any other external tool right the the thing is first of all you have to do your testing uh need to make sure that all your apis are meeting sla if your dotnet application and the java application is already having a problem in the scalability you don't have an option you have to do directly and again that would in my suggestion what i have done to my customers and clients if that's the situation i move my dotnet application to azure i move my java application to heroku and that's where i can i can scale them vertically and horizontally i can increase dyno uh, i can increase pods that's how i get a uh, performance level and if you think about uh, one intermediary layer right that's a very 
I would say pretty standard integration pattern follows these days. So for an example, you use a Google API, right? Do you think we are hitting Google API directly? No, there is a uh, reverse proxy sitting between you and the Google API, just like in MuleSoft, where it is checking, oh, are you over your hourly limit? How many APIs you have done call out already? These logic of how many APIs, how many things you have hit is never in API directly. There is another layer <coughs> which is managing that. So to answer your question, there is no problem introducing one more layer because infrastructure of internet is being increased day by day, right? You have powerful processor, you have fiber optics these days, right? If your homegrown system are facing a problem, I will say this is time to think to move those systems to either Azure or Heroku or Amazon AWS. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Yeah, Jitendra, I have a question. Uh, the uh, Salesforce connector you used for in MuleSoft, so that connection, is it made uh, a stateless connection or a stateful connection? Perfect. Any, any integration in this world which is on HTTP is stateless. It's stateless. So everything is stateless. Every time integration is being made to the Salesforce, server do some <laughs> extra overheading, deserializing session ID, deserializing cookies, making sure system is alive or not alive. So to answer your question, everything is stateless and everything is custom. So every time like I use a connector in MuleSoft, so will it not <coughs> increase my API counts in Salesforce because I have a daily count or a monthly count of API callouts in Salesforce limit? Very good question. So Heroku, as you can know, as you know, right, anything Heroku is trying to connect to the Salesforce is not using API. Same way, if you have MuleSoft license, talk to your account executive, they give you extra API limit if you are API, uh, if, if you are MuleSoft user. Now, again, it's a safe harbor state. In future, anything which is trying to be connected from MuleSoft to the Salesforce is going to be API count free. At the moment, MuleSoft, yes, it is using API count, but Salesforce gives you extra API if you are a MuleSoft customer. Okay, okay. So one final question, like whatever, whenever we use a MuleSoft connector, uh, sorry, Salesforce connector in MuleSoft, the output is a uh, object. So how to convert that into a like variable? In MuleSoft you are saying? Yeah, so when we use Salesforce there connector and use a query, Mm -hmm. and use a query method, the output is an object. So you can't gener uh, generally use the transform message directly and use it as a variable. <clears throat> so very good. So what I did today, if you saw, right, if output is object, try to convert that object to JSON in some sample file or something. And like I did, right, I had my response in my XML sample file. I gave that sample XML file as a metadata and Yusuf was automatically able to generate the code. That I would suggest. So anything Salesforce is giving an object, it's an XML or whatever, have a sample, and you can do that pretty much using Postman or SOAP UI. That is the reason if you see, uh, if you can see, can still see my screen, right? Use a SOAP UI, get uh, get your XML, right? Of course, everything in Newsoft is object, I agree. Get a equivalent X, uh, XML, use the transform, uh, transform message, drag and drop, and Salesforce would be automatically, uh, sorry, MuleSoft would be automatically able to convert each to the JSON format. And you go ahead and use the JSON. Uh, if you see in my case, all I did is, I simply said payload, application JSON. You can do exactly same. You don't need to do anything. This is the output from Salesforce. You introduce this transform message, use this code, you will get JSON. Another question, right? How to have it in payload, uh, in variable, I would not suggest. Any, do not try to use variable to hold the big objects or big data in MuleSoft. It will kill your MuleSoft application. Variable is in memory. So try to avoid using variable to hold the whole payload. Okay. Use variable, yeah, use variable to store ID, use variable to store some uh, uh, constants or something, right? Use an intermediate database, basically. If you have a huge payload, uh, use, uh, there is some concept of, uh, I'm not able to recall, where uh, you can use uh, intermediate database in MuleSoft, object store or something that can be used. 
Okay. Yeah, okay. that is object storage. Yeah. Hey, Jitendra, Narish here again. Sorry. So I was just thinking about this platform event and the outbound messages. Like that's the whole gist because mm -hmm. they are the five starters. Uh, in our integration patterns uh, uh, demo today, right? But uh, let's say like mm -hmm. uh, there is an um, endpoint, like it's a Java-based application, they have exposed an endpoint. And they say that whenever you create an account in Salesforce, like uh, you just send it as a JSON and we will read that out. Uh, like we will process it in our um, uh, third party application. So like uh, if for this kind of integration, can we use platform event or outbound message? Like to generate a JSON, whenever a, an account is created, like we want to generate a JSON with some more custom properties that the third party application wants, and we want to publish it onto an URL that they exposed. Like, like they exposed <clears throat> integration slash message. This is, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is very, I will say this is pretty common uh, uh, discussion happens between the Salesforce architect, developer, and the external system. Everyone is trying to avoid their work, to be frank, right? And normally this discussion starts with integration. External system won't message in that format. That is really a wrong way to start discussion. If the, you have a consideration and you have a condition basically saying that external system wants something in JSON and we will do something indirectly, external system is saying, hey, we are contract first. This is our format. Salesforce has to follow, which is not really a nice because Salesforce is a big product, right? One size never fit all. Salesforce is not going to write custom API for every customer. So the common ground here is we have to go back to our uh, system uh, enterprise architect or whoever involved in those integration, tell them it is not going to give you the JSON in the format you want. Salesforce can give you outbound message, which is an uh, XML. Salesforce can give you the platform. And again, messaging key or the platform event is not used to hold the whole object. Use the platform event to give the object ID and tell the external system, use this external ID, connect to the Salesforce, do whatever you want to go wild in the Salesforce org. That should be the right pattern. But once the external system comes back and say, oh, this is the JSON you have to follow, no. That is the wrong start of discussion, in my opinion. Okay, but most of the times what happens is they already have those things in place. They'll say that uh, these are already there. You can use it and uh, integrate with us. So because most of the time, like Salesforce yeah, so, is the new thing that is coming to the, exactly. uh, into the picture because all these are legacy applications that they are there from 90s. So they have the systems in place, correct. big, big systems. Correct, and correct. Uh, Salesforce is a newbie yeah. around the corner. And so we have to integrate means, yeah. Exactly. And you have to tell them your systems are from 90s. You should not repeat the mistake or you should not repeat the same technology stack from 90s. So if that's the concern, I am completely understandable. They cannot change because the actual developer who wrote application may not be in the company at all. Nobody even know how the legacy system is working. So in that case, middleware is the right solution, Naresh. Use the middleware and that's the common ground between Salesforce and the legacy system. But do not write custom. If you see my slide today, and again, this five star, four star is not me giving. It's my experience on the, all the documentation. Anywhere I have used Apex is a three star or 2.5 star. So use a middleware, try to write less code inside Salesforce, more code in the middleware. Today, Salesforce is integrating with the legacy system. Tomorrow, Salesforce needs to integrate some other system. How, how the one, and that is the reason most of the Salesforce project might fail or might go in red. Because you start writing an Apex, oh, Salesforce can easily write it. You start writing one hour, two hour, two, one year, two year, three year, and when you see three year down the line, you understand, oh, we have done a mistake code is not manageable, we are hitting governor limit, we are hitting concurrent Apex limit, we are hitting CPU limit, because we are going against integration pattern. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. Because my yeah. understanding of uh, the ESB is like, uh, if you have disparate systems, I mean, disparate systems, like different systems, you want to consume a message, like let's say like uh, uh, I'm recharging, and uh, I can recharge with a web application, I can recharge with a text message, I can recharge by calling the customer care. So if you have disparate systems uh, and we want to send a message to them, and that's when we use ESB or e MuleSoft. Uh, but I, I mean, that's what my understanding, but not for point to point applications, like in, like I'm have to call someone like directly. So I thought like a we will only right, use right. MuleSoft, yeah. No, so MuleSoft is ESB, MuleSoft is middleware. Okay, and again, for the demo purpose today, I have used a MuleSoft because I, I don't get easy access to Power uh, Informatica. I don't get easy access to the Boomi. I get pretty easy access to the MuleSoft, right? But again, I'm not in favor of any ESB. One is better than another. The, the, in your situation, Naresh, the right answer is 
if legacy cannot change their format don't ask salesforce to change its format have the middle ground have the middle way to do that transformation okay i see one yeah, i see one question from raj kumar so without mulesoft is it possible to use platform event with legacy system answer is yeah legacy system has to use the salesforce soap api or the rest api and legacy system has to write extra code but yes they can use a platform event multiple ways they can do they can use comet day long polling http or they can connect with the salesforce at regular interval every 30 minutes read the messaging and do operation i see question from rama if we have api enabled in professional edition how to invoke external rest service do we have any specific solution so rama i have never worked in the professional edition to be frank uh, if professional services edition of salesforce support something it would just like it would just work like uh, enterprise or unlimited uh, but i doubt i professional services has so many limitation and that is the reason it's a professional normally you cannot write a code or anything there if the licensing allows if your account executive allows yes you are in luck question from chetan <clears throat> what is the difference between esb and etl perfect so esb and etl are two completely different esb are normally uh, uh, middleware on cloud uh, which is normally uh, normally responsible to perform integration between two system with less data volume less transformation capability and more frequent but if you need to integrate millions of billions of record which does not need to be integrated on real time and you need a huge transformation capability etl is the right solution so bulk etl real time esb esb has little bit less capacity than etl if you want same capacity in esb you have to pay a lot to vendor so real time esb nightly extraction transformation loading is etl that's its full form itself any anyone else aman mulesoft etl capability is advantage over the other etl tools like talent for so again mulesoft in my opinion is better suited for esb i would not consider mulesoft as a etl tool yet can it do etl job yes but mulesoft is not really an etl it's mostly used in esb one advantage of mulesoft compared to any informatica power center or anything is mulesoft is a salesforce product right now it has a lot of connector in future it is going to have a lot of connector as it is a salesforce baby it's, if you have an option go ahead and use with mulesoft it will any product from the salesforce is point and click first and if you see in mulesoft today as well i have not written any code all drag and drop so go ahead and use mulesoft easy to use team go ahead unmute yourself you have any question uh, let's discuss hey jitan yeah, this is sir prad um uh, go ahead i'll go after yeah hi jitan this is tikam so uh, uh, recently we are working on a project where we need to send all the data of cases uh, the cases are created in the salesforce from email to case from the web to case so whenever it is created in the salesforce system we need to pass all the information mm -hmm. to the third party like the external genesis system and they send us a mm -hmm. request already something so it is a like request and reply from that so right now what we have mm -hmm. achieved it write a trigger and we use the qml apex as i think call so what you suggest in that case when we get a need a real time integration and the ask was to real time but because of the limitation of trigger we didn't do that we go with the qml apex so need your suggestion on that and I, and i believe genesis is a cti application right cti genesis that's what you are talking about uh it's actually they are managing like uh, uh, uh like kind of the case management that we have in the salesforce they are managing the people over there like assigning work items yeah so it is just I I have worked in the Genesis in past, and I believe this is the same Genesis you are talking about in the service cloud, where they have CTA capability, and it's a pretty uh, solid application. Uh, it has IVF capability as well. If this is the same system, I will say Genesis does have a capability to uh, write a code and connect to the Salesforce. So in your case, if I am an architect, 
I would go against trigger. I will go with the platform event. I will publish the case ID, and I will ask Genesis to connect to the Salesforce and read whatever they want to read from Salesforce. And if they want to pass something back to the Salesforce, come back again directly do the DML in the case ID, or even they can publish a platform event and we can subscribe it and we can do our job. But again, anything, uh, any API callout from trigger is not a good practice. Got it. Thank, thank you. Yeah. But we have a limit of inbound calls, right? Uh, does it not uh, defeat that purpose? Sorry, what is the limit? So uh, I think the inbound calls, there is a limit, right? So if uh, API call out, yeah. Yeah, so if the application has to query uh, to, ex uh, to enhance uh, the request packet, uh, does it not uh, defeat the purpose, right? I mean, on a one way, we are encouraging the outbound. And other way, we are mm -hmm. at, um, uh, uh, the more number of inbound calls. Yeah, 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 that's a very good, very, yeah, that's a very good thinking. Uh, so tell me, uh, team, how many of you on call are have hit API limit in Salesforce? It's a huge API limit. Huge. Me. I'm I'm okay. uh, right, Always. and if you hit it. Yeah, and if and if you hit that limit, connect your account executive. They would be gladly able to increase that. It's not most most costly. So just on the basis of this limit, right, which we you may hit, I would not suggest to go against any uh, integration pattern. So I would still take external system until Salesforce does not have to write any code, and external system is using standard API. I am good. If they are hitting the API limit or anything, I will go to the account executive and I will ask them, hey, please increase limit. If they are asking for money, I will go to the client. I will make a case that go ahead and increase this API limit because that is the best way to do it. But uh, Jitendra, like uh, if external system, we have to write code in external system means like the mo the whole idea is like no coding and just configuration. That's the motto of Salesforce. But uh, if you are writing a code in external system means like they are introducing the bugs. So and we at the, at the same time like uh, we are reducing our workload and giving the workload to them. So, see, so yeah, exactly. I completed, and that is that's why right. Yeah, there has to be balance, right? Either something has to be written in Salesforce. So t see, most of the time, external system are Java application or the .NET. They don't have a governor limit like us. They don't have a limit like oh, you can do only ten callouts in a single transaction, or you can do all callouts in the one twenty second. Those kind of the governor limits are inside Salesforce. So I would still outweigh writing code in Salesforce against writing code in legacy system. If the legacy system is against Salesforce, they also have a governor limit, then again, middleware is the right solution. See, think of, see everybody right on this call, think about your past experience. Okay, you would be very easily able to relate to this. Any customization you write in Salesforce is never a final stop. For example, a gentleman just asked that for they have done Genesis integration with Trigger. Trust me, sooner or later, there are going to be modification. They are going to hit limit. They are going to have retry mechanism in place, something in failing, delivery notification. We have to, those kind of stuff is going to introduce. It's never simple, uh, just one stop solution. Right. We also did the integration in the same way. That's why we are like very concerned. Like it's the same approach, like Trigger making a future call using HTTP callouts. Yeah. So if you so if you see my slide, right? Amit Amit can share this slide. Team, please, if you are not speaking, uh, please go on mute. Yeah. Okay. So if you see my uh, yeah, if you see my slide on demo, right? I have added this Salesforce documentation. See, this should be your Bible. Okay. Open this link, and Salesforce documentation agrees whatever I have said in this slide. Okay, that should be your Bible. If external enterprise architect or someone is saying, oh no, we should do that, show this official document to those guys and say, hey, this is what Salesforce is saying, what we can do. Okay, because you should not go again. I mean, Salesforce, thousands of customers, after reading all those customers' problem and everything, Salesforce have made this documentation from the learning from their mistake. Do not, I mean, uh, project is very short. Do not repeat the same mistake if you know there is a problem going on in future.
and again that is a very important integration patterns are very important and critical for your project right we want to do it right if not it's going to hit us back if not now like in, exactly anytime soon but but uh, like if the third party systems uh, expect uh, some kind of format you are saying like yeah i don't know like how to convince them to so and also yeah so if they are expecting some time of format uh, again uh, we cannot win with them right try to get the leadership even if a small format go ahead right and apex because salesforce does provide a capability but my experience trust me once external system know oh salesforce is capable to do it hey can you do this please integration can you do another integration can you do third integration you start with one integration it ends up 20 other integration where salesforce is owning and salesforce developer always say hey we can do in two weeks where the middleware says we have two months we need two months that is normally where everything comes to the salesforce so we have to be very mindful what estimation we are doing we have to very clear that we are doing it this is a one time last time do not come back to us again so you really have to maintain a uh, maintain balance i will say perfect okay. team any other so, question there is one, one, one last yeah guys we are running out of the time i will suggest everyone like put your question on our apex our website and we'll try to answer there and keep posting question over there and thank you so much for joining this and i'm sorry like to stop you to ask a question but definitely you still can post this question on our website reach out to us directly we will try to answer them and thank you everyone for the joining and uh, please subscribe our channel to get the notific uh, get the notification of the all video and definitely i will put this uh, slide on our website so that you can get this all this link and especially the part to code recording this is really great sessions so i will be share all this link with you on our website thank you everyone for the joining they want to